Construct 3 is a fantastic game engine. This is perfectly between the educational game engines like Scratch and Kodu, which have a really quick learning curve, and then the large production game engines of Unreal and Unity, which have really high quality games that you can then export to pretty much any platform. However, this can't be said for the 3D side of Construct, which is far more difficult to learn than other engines like Unity or Unreal, and you get a very, very small fraction of the result as well. Now you can argue that Construct 3 is a 2D game engine, does that side really, really well, and only has the 3D elements that allow you to enhance your 2D games, but that hasn't stopped the community, myself included, creating impressive demos of what you could do inside of 3D Construct. Now I spent a lot of time playing around with Construct 3 and been coming up with a list of realistic improvements that I'd want to see to Construct 3D to make it much easier to use while still keeping that identity of Construct that makes Construct stand out over the other engines. So I want to start with one of the bigger changes. Behaviours for me are the key principle behind Construct and it makes it so easy to use. You can make a 2D game in seconds. Now imagine if you could do the same for a 3D game with no code. Simply add in a couple of 3D blocks, you could add in a player icon, and then you could go onto your 3D block and now there's a new 3D solid behavior. You could then go to your player and add in a 3D eight direction behavior and a scroll to behavior. Straight away, you've got a working demo for a 3D game and if you can get that far really quickly, the more likely to want to continue. And then you could have normal properties as well, such as adding gravity control or camera height. So you're making it a little bit more advanced, but you're still not going to any of the coding yet. You're just dealing with behaviors. My second change would be angles. Currently, you can only rotate on one plane, which is a big clue that the 3D stuff is meant to be for the 2D side only. This massively limits what can be made using the already limited number of 3D shapes that we have access to. Now, there are lots of fancy rotation options that you can use. The typical ones that you normally see in game engines have the green, blue and red sort of angles that you can twist and move around and why that would be fantastic to have, I don't think we actually need it. I think most people would be happy just to have it a property box that you can just type in and change it. And then more importantly, have an option in runtime as well. So we could change these rotations inside of runtime. Give those tools to the community and they'll do some fantastic stuff with it. Next we have is optimization. Now, Optimization is a big problem and 3D games are much more laggy than the 2D counterparts. First of all, I think a lot of this needs to happen behind the scenes and I think the Construct team need to sort out some optimization for 3D objects. However, there's a couple of things that we can do as well to make it even better. First of all, the engine always runs in 120 frames per second. If the game falls below that number, the game becomes very laggy and choppy. Now there is an option that you can use to set the minimum frame rate. So you can say, okay, the minimum frame rate for this game is gonna be 120. And if it falls below that number now, it puts the game in slow motion instead, stopping that lag. However, this can become quite a problem. If you've got a big game with lots of objects, you're just getting lots of slow down, the game doesn't run as intended. However, let's have a max frame rate option instead. Let's set the game to run at 60 FPS or even 30 FPS. Why a low frame rate is not considered the best, it's better to have a low frame rate that is consistent and works all the time, as opposed to having a high frame rate that's choppy or randomly puts the game into slow motion. So that small change can make a big difference. Now for some quick fire changes. Contract works inside the browser, it's not making full use of the PC. Now you could just make a dedicated offline version of Construct, but then you need to update both of them. That takes a lot of work to do, so instead, is it possible to create an offline program that just runs construct files? It doesn't edit them in any ways, it just runs them and makes full use of the computer's hardware. No idea how difficult that one is to implement, but I want to add it just in case. For the 3D editor, why not add two small cubes in the corner? And this will just show you what the final cube or 3D shape will look like. And this would be a big help because it avoids you having to play the project, look around the cube to see what it looks like. Back to some of the bigger changes. 3D collision is an issue. First of all, the collision is not actually a box as it appears. You actually only get the collision on the bottom square. This makes it really awkward if you are using a game that has touch controls and you're trying to click on the 3D object because you need to click on that bottom square only. So having a proper box collision would be fantastic and combining that with the 3D solid behavior I've already talked about would be great. 
So this could be just a property option that has a drop down box of what collision shape would you want for this object. I also think some new shapes would be really, really handy as well, such as a cylinder, a sphere and a dome. So just a bit more freedom and control without having to implement stuff like 3D assets, which have their own issues and problems and optimization becomes even more difficult. 3D shapes are absolutely fine. We can do a lot with 3D shapes, but a couple more 3D shapes and collision needs fixing. Next, we have one of the biggest issues when creating a 3D game is that 3D shapes on their own are a little bit bland. But you can combine multiple shapes together and you can get a really, really great result as we've done lots of already in the community. Even if we look at the tree that's on the screen, it's just two shapes and it looks pretty good. However, if we want to move that tree, we need to select both the trunk of the tree and the base. Now we can just drag over them and move them both at the same time, but if we want to create lots of trees, we've now got an issue. Wouldn't it be fantastic if we could select multiple 3D objects and create an object group? We could then drag in this object group and it adds in a new tree straight away. And we could also use code to add a new tree as well. Now you can do this already inside of Construct, and it's something that I've done quite a lot of already, but it's lots of repeating code, lots of moving stuff and position, and it is really, really fiddly to do. And I think this would be a really welcome change for a 2D feature as well. And you could do a lot in 2D by having these object groups. Finally, I've saved my favorite till last. When looking at a 3D world and construct, it can be hard to see what it might look like unless you actually play the world. Now, what you can do is you can scroll up and down or left and right, and you can see the 3D objects from a slightly different perspective. Now, the obvious way to fix this is by implementing a 3D camera, but that's really difficult to implement and it comes with its own problems. And actually for an editor-like construct, I think it's a little bit overkill as well. Instead, what I think is better is a simple slider that can be added to the corner, and this will allow you to shift the perspective even more than you can already by just scrolling up and down, allowing you to see the world from a new angle. And this will have the added bonus of letting you select 3D objects that might be obstructed by other 3D objects as well. So this is how I'd personally change Construct's 3D element. I think all these changes are not overly complicated to implement. Of course, they will still require lots of work and testing. You can't just put them straight in. But most importantly, it keeps the identity of Construct intact, which is something that I really want to achieve when looking at this problem. But let me know what changes you would want to make. And if you want to help out this channel, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.